Meanwhile, want to say hello to Leron. Thanks for joining us again, the techie guy. If you guys don't remember, we had him on a few, ah, what has it been, about two months or so back? I'm flies when you're not having fun. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mike. How are we doing? Are we all good? Good. good. So uh, everyone, if you haven't already seen Lee Ron's channel, you should definitely check it out. It's under the techie guy. Um, that's all one word, right? Yeah. So it's um, the blog is under thetechieguy.com. And if you want to check out the YouTube channel, it's youtube.com forward slash and just my name, Liron Segev. Okay, One and Liron makes technology simple. So uh, if it isn't us, there are certainly someone else in our life who could probably use a little, hey, go watch this guy's channel, go to his website, he'll help you figure it out. And um, I think, let me make sure, let me check my notes real quick here, but um, actually we'll jump into that in just a second. There were a couple things that I thought everyone would be interested in. Uh, number one is you've probably heard Apple has released a red iPhone 8. I don't know that this is cause for celebration. I mean, it does look pretty cool, I'll be honest. You know, when you when you look at it, it's a cool looking phone. It's red instead of these kind of muted colors that they've had in the past, like uh, rose gold and titanium pink or whatever it was. So the phone looks cool. The good part being, of course, that they donate a percentage of the proceeds from those sales to a uh, organization that uh, benefits people who have AIDS or HIV, which is cool also. The interesting thing to me about this, and they do state historically how much money they've contributed to those organizations, but on this one, they don't tell you what percentage of that sale goes to those charities. So, it, you know, it's cool. And, and this is kind of the thing of the future, you know, instead of asking people to write a check or make a donation or give a tip or, you know, put something in a box, if you can buy a product that you're already planning on getting and you know that some of that money is going to help someone, that's a great idea. Oh, yeah. My question is how much of it? Like, I'd really like to know how much of that one iPhone sale goes to help those charities. And, you know, Apple, not unlike a lot of other companies, don't really give out those details. So um, it's hard to say. Like, we really don't know what the answer to that one is. On the plus side, it is red, which means your iPhone goes much faster. That's so, true. That's true. So, yeah. so it's well worth the donation. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Um, my <laughs> my girl says, says, says the iPhone not fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and fair enough. Uh, <laughs> we're we're all critical of every manufacturer. I think. Yeah. Now. Absolutely. So, and, at least th that's my view of it. I know we have people on each side, but you know, sure, sure. Uh, for whatever it's worth, I will say this, and this is something that everyone needs to know about. If you haven't already heard. If you didn't upgrade your iPhone to 11.3, you should not do so until Apple figures out what's going on. Now, every time there's a major software or a firmware upgrade for iPhones or anything else, there tends to be a couple bugs here and there. And I know that a lot of people like to be cutting edge and get the newest, latest, greatest thing. We got beta testers, you know. Um, with that comes some possibility of problems. And I, I, I imagine a lot of people already know about that, but it's funny to me that they they know that going in and then when it happens you know that company is the worst thing in the world how dare you release this when it doesn't work properly well nobody said you had well except for that little bug bug thing um that little nag screen you get that says to upgrade right well i'll cut right to the chase here 11.3 was causing some problems and we had this this way back on 11.1 i think it was where people's screens started to malfunction if you replace them with a third party piece of equipment okay and this is the thing that most people will say on a, you know, immediately is don't upgrade to 11.3 or don't go get your phone fixed by a third party repair center because it doesn't work with 11.3. And in fact, we now know that 11.3 has problems with OEM parts from Apple. So you can have an original screen from an iPhone, you break yours, you get it replaced with another original screen and your your phone doesn't work right anymore. And they're calling it bricked. It's not completely dead, but the touchscreen can, can cause problems. Um, they're saying that the Bluetooth has got issues with 11.3. So we always urge people that if you want a stable build, then you're looking for something that's been out there for a while. It's been tested. There's probably a patch already because initially they had a problem with it. Well, we're all, we're back to square one again because 11.3 has some serious problems. So, um, if you have, if you're in the repair business, you have customers coming in and they're having trouble with their screen, hopefully Apple will patch this soon. It wouldn't make sense for them not to, especially since they stopped signing the previous firmware. So you cannot downgrade it. So you go to 11.3, there's no turning back, even if your phone doesn't work properly. And not the first time in history, but here it is again. 
But but what are Apple saying? I mean, are they standing by this and are, are they admitting that we have a problem? This is the thing. I don't see any indication that Apple is is acknowledging the problem. I don't see any indication that they're planning to push something to fix it. I haven't seen any seen or heard anything from Apple addressing this problem. So so far, it's been all criticisms from you know everyone out there, um, but really no solution that we can anticipate except for waiting until the patch for eleven point three comes out. So, but but that's scary. I mean, if it's something like a touch screen. It's something that's used, I suppose, every time you use your phone. It's not like one of those. <laughs> it's not one of those rare occasions. You know, every time you make a left using the GPS and listening to Celine Dion, you know, which is a rare, rare occasion. A touchscreen is every single time you touch your phone. How do they miss that? Yeah, it, it makes no sense. And I, br I talked about this briefly earlier in the week. And Apple has the ability to go back and say, you know what, if you want to downgrade your phone, we can authorize, we can sign that right. previous firmware. That way you do a restore, you get it back to what it was before and everything's working, but they haven't done that. So, you know, it's like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. But I should say this, and a lot of people will say that I'm critical of Apple. I try to be critical of every company, Everyone. every operating system, every product. I am a consumer, so I spend my hard-earned dollars on brand A, B, or C, it doesn't really matter. I'm not biased. I don't feel that I am. I mm -hmm. want customers to get what they pay for. That That's what I feel passionately about. Right. And Apple, unfortunately, has a history of running into these sorts of problems. I don't know if you've already heard about it, but they had something way back when the iPhone 5S came out where if you replace the screen and the home button on your iPhone 5S, everything worked fine. So you can go to the store, you can go to a third party, you can buy it online, you can do your own repair, whatever you want. But when you went to upgrade your to the newest firmware or you restored your phone, you got what basically a blue screen of death. So your phone would not work anymore because the aftermarket fingerprint scanners with the secure enclave were not compatible with the device. Now, it would have made sense for that to happen as soon as you installed it, because then you would immediately know right. there's a problem, we can't do this, it's not gonna work. But instead, the way that they designed it somehow, intentionally or not, you could switch out the part, you're just fine indefinitely until you go to restore the phone and suddenly you're bricked. And if you're 900 miles away from the nearest Apple store, that leaves you stranded. And that's that's the problem with this. You know, If you've got 11.3, right. you've got a, internet access so you can do the upgrade, but you don't, you can't realistically get to an Apple store. Then once your phone's bricked, you have no phone. It's insane. But so, you, so the advice. I mean, look, we all know that when a new upgrade comes in, don't rush to do this. Okay. Um, whilst we know this, <laughs> um, as you said, the nag screen really entices you to to click on the upgrade, and it, from my understanding, you, it's already downloaded the upgrade so taking space on your phone right. so if you're one of those with a 16 gig like my daughter is and she goes what do i do I said well take the plan just suppose you got to upgrade you don't have a choice it's a gig and a half that you've you've just lost right well you can go in and delete it and you yeah. can in your settings last time i checked you could you could turn your settings or you could select an option that prevented the new operating system from being downloaded unless you were on Wi-Fi so that that way you weren't using up your gotcha. data. But as soon right. as you connect to a Wi-Fi well, the download, mm -hmm. you lost that gig and a half. It's very frustrating. Yeah, I felt the same way. I don't know how many times I deleted that thing and then, of course, you know, downloaded it immediately all over again. So um, hopefully we get more control over that in the future. So Johnny said that, oh, and by the way, everyone, I wanted to mention and acknowledge Thank you so much to D Johnny Chang. He will be helping us to moderate the comments. I know that the last few streams, it's been difficult for me to keep up with the conversation and see what everybody's putting in the chat area. And oftentimes I'll start talking to someone who isn't even chatting to me. So Johnny's helping us out with that. Thank you so much, Johnny. Um, we've actually got something in here about a politician losing their baby pictures because of the 11.3. Let's see. Um, all fun and games for Apple until some politician. Oh, so until some politician loses their baby pictures because of it, risky play just to undermine third party repair. And I, that is 100% on the nose. As soon as someone important or famous right. or, you know, notoriety of some sort has a problem with this, we don't get a lot of ammunition to say, hey, you guys need to fix this. You know, until there's a class action lawsuit, 
or some politician or somebody famous says, hey, you guys screwed up my phone. Then you have Rihanna come out and say that Snapchat sucks. And all of a sudden they lose, you know, 17,000, <laughs> you know, million users or whatever it is. I guess that's what we need to make something change. Which, which, if you think about it, is I don't want to jump the gun here, but that's what happened with Facebook. <laughs> you know, um, until someone made a big stink, um, it, it was just one of those situations that a few users experienced. No biggie. But when it the uh, hit the fan, <laughs> well, congressional hearing. Well, why don't you know what, Leron? Why don't we? We can come back to the FTC thing. Because you have me intrigued. I watch just the highlights, and I'm sure that there are a lot of other people who are kind of following this whole Facebook thing. Um, a while back, I abandoned Facebook. I didn't delete my account because I love the idea of being able to catch up with old friends that you don't did, haven't seen since childhood. You know you're there. There's your page. They can find you. You can find them. Outside of that, I stepped away from it a long time ago. But as far as this, this hearing goes, where to start? Wow, where do we begin? <laughs> um, okay, so let's kind of let's do a little bit of an overcap or kind of a review what's going on. Um, so, dear Mark Zuckerberg got pulled in front of a Senate hearing, um, and he had to sit there for two days answering questions about his platform. Okay, uh, quick question. Uh, yes, is Mark Zuckerberg an Android? The jury's out. Okay. Um, okay. I mean. <laughs> Because he could have sat there for 48 hours hour straight without on his booster seat, which I saw that part. <laughs> you know, I think the the one thing we have to remember, these guys, um, like especially Mark, uh, sorry, Mr. Zuckerberg, um, he hates TV interviews. Historically, he hated TV interviews. So for him to sit there for two days in front of the world's media, that must have been quite a feat. Okay. So I've got to give him credit for keeping his composure. And I'll tell you what it was. I don't know if you guys, ever, if anybody in the chat has watched it, let me know. Um, but I don't know if you saw any parts of it. But I'll tell you what I describe it as. It was like explaining to your grandma how to use the internet. You know that frustrating feeling? You know, when you go, no, no, the internet's not down. No, no, <laughs> your power is off. You've got to switch it on first, mom. You know, that kind of thing. That is what this whole thing was about. I think that I'm, I'm, I'm quite shocked, to be honest, about how little people knew, know about how the world operates, how an ad model service operates. The questions that they were asking him was so ridiculous and so off point, and it was just, uh, it, it was just, it was just offsides. So it got to the point where I really could think that the only question that they wanted to ask him was, how do I stop the zero, zero flashing on my VCR? That is the only thing that I thought was going through their heads. They didn't have a clue how ads work, how tracking works, how pixels work, how the internet works. And poor Mark sat there answering questions about applications that had nothing to do with him. So very frustrating. Things, questions like, does your damn do you get tracked? Things like, oh, well, if you know the internet, you know that when you do a search for a certain term, Amazingly, all the ads that you see are about that term. It's not Facebook that's tracking you. It's the website owner that's tracking you. They've got something called a pixel. They understand the kind of searches that you're looking for, and they want to serve you a better ad so that you have a better chance of buying from them. This is pure, normal market economics. If I'm going to get an ad, it might as well be a relevant ad, right? And the, the senators didn't kind of understand how this whole thing was tied up together. It was very frustrating. And I think Leon. I could imagine. Oh, I lost you. Sorry, you froze up there for a sec. I think we're back. I think we all did. <laughs> um, as uh, you said, Johnny in this chat says, um, cookies have been around since the days of HTML. 100%. It, that is how the internet works. The internet works based on the fact that you hit a website, you're reading some piece of content, the website owner knows that that's where, what you're doing. And it understands that, hey, if you're interested in this piece of content, you might also be interested in another piece of content. Or you might be interested in this promotion that we have. Amazingly, when you put something in your checkout basket, but don't actually check out, a couple of days later, you'll get a discount coupon for that exact item. <gasps> Miracles, right? Oh, that's a, that's a nice little trick, by the way. If yes, absolutely. 
So do you guys know about this? I mean, everyone knows about the checkout trick. So the idea, in case you missed it, the idea with this is that if you're going to a website and you're in no rush, oh, Mike, I think we got a bit of a feedback there. I can hear a bit of an echo. You're Just getting an echo? I am. Guys in the chat, are you getting any echoes? Good, one, two, three. Sounds good on my end. Okay, I'll carry on talking to him regardless. Um, Okay, so basically the little trick here, there's two tricks that I want to share with you on that. One, if you're in no rush for a product, check out, go, sorry, take it, add it to your, to your basket, do not check out, close the browser, wait a couple of days. If, any, if it's a good marketer on their, on their side, they'll send you a coupon for that exact item, number one. Number two, if you're ever traveling and you want to book a flat or a hotel or car rental, never, ever, 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 ever log in. Because as soon as you log in, they know your entire history. They know how much you spend, where you've been, whether it's business or pleasure, and they hike up the price. You can try the open incognito mode, as you everybody knows how to do in Chrome. And that is also an option in um, Firefox. Open up there and then do your searches and your prices are going to be lower than if you had logged in funny that that's so the way that it works maybe combine both of those techniques go incognito definitely find your deal log in then don't book the trip and wait for them to send you a coupon for a discount I, i'm not saying i have done that but it's possible <laughs> yeah <laughs> so and i'm not i don't think there's any question in anyone's mind that yes when you go somewhere on the internet at least if you've been on it for the last 20 years right. you know that everything's being tracked and i mean we know now publicly this is not only known but completely legal they passed the law back in about the middle of last year that said your ISP is allowed to collect any information they want and sell it to anyone who wants to buy it from them. So wherever it is that you spend your shopping dollars online, whatever website you frequent, whatever it is you're doing with your time, you can assume that's publicly available, you know, unless you're behind some sort of virtual uh, VPN or something like that. All of this, all of this information is being harvested. I mean, this is the information age. That's where the money is at. People will pay to get information about you to target you with ads. And I, I, hopefully, you know, no one's still questioning that. But your impression is that most of those hearings were spent not constructively because the people who were asking the questions didn't know enough about how the system works. And they didn't even know what you've just said. The fact that even offline shopping and gets married to a loyalty program and the reason they do that isn't to give you a couple of dollars off. They do that because it's free market research. Um, and they didn't understand that those components actually fit together. And that was very, very frustrating. I think they needed to ask one question. And that one question is a simple one. It's, dear Mark, if your daughter is 13 years old and she can get a first Facebook account, are you happy? with the default security settings? That is the only question. If he had said no, because she had to do one, two, three, and four, that shows you about his system. If he had said, absolutely, I would trust my daughter online with the default settings, there's your answer. Right. They didn't get to the meat of this. They didn't get to the heart of this. And all they did was they kept bouncing around about this tracking and information. And I think the part that they misunderstood and I don't want to go too long into this, but the part that they misunderstood is the part about the data. They thought, uh, my, my impression was that they thought that the data actually gets given to the advertisers. Uh, I think we've frozen again. We've frozen? No, we good. Okay, sorry guys. Um, so I think what they think is that the data actually was given to the advertisers. And the advertiser could then see your name and your address and what you shop and where you eat. That is absolutely not the case. Advertisers are able to log in and target an ad at an idea, at a demographics, um, at, at somebody with certain interest. They never get your details. And by the way, it's not just Facebook. It's Twitter. It's LinkedIn. It's Pinterest. It's Google, Microsoft, Amazon. <laughs> you name it. Anyone with an ad model is doing exactly the same thing. And as Joshua says in the chat, you're right, Cambridge hearing is going to be 
brutal. <laughs> um, and I think that if they were smart, they would get a tech person to either brief them or do the questioning because this was just yeah. ridiculous. The, and we've had this this challenge for quite some time when it comes to a number of uh, controversial topics, and that is anyone who isn't experienced with later technology. When I say later, I mean the last 10 years, you know, if you have been hiding under a rock and you're still using a flip phone and you don't, you know, if you can't keep up with the times and you're in a position to oversee or to participate in legislating anything that has to do with the internet, there should be, shouldn't there be some requirement? Like you should know what you're doing on the internet before you start voting you know, for laws for or against anything. It, it, it's madness. I, I, it's it's like me telling you how to run your shop, me knowing zero about the electronics on the underlying element or how everything fits together. How dare I give you legislation to say, you'll do this and you'll do that because I think it's cool. Well, well it's I have plenty of customers that will do that. So <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Well, All there right, we go. So, um, <laughs> We, we'll let that one go because we could probably go on indefinitely um. about this. <laughs> but like you said, yeah, that's crazy. I, I saw that and I saw a few people commenting about that. And and he's um, he certainly was very patient. And you, those are some very good points. At the same time, when it comes to interference on elections from foreign interests, uh, hate groups, you know, a number of things that are going on on Facebook, obviously we need some controls over that. So I, I imagine as laws typically um take a long time to catch up you know with anything and for a good reason we don't want to rush you know suddenly we're gonna sure. make this illegal or change this you know we need to really see what's going on uh but in the interim it's gonna be kind of a kind of a wild wild west i guess for advertisers and facebook and everyone else you know until they decide what what how they're going to regulate this yeah and then you gotta draw the line somewhere when you over regulate you stifle innovation um so it, there's a happy medium somewhere in between, but it cannot be that, well, we don't understand it, therefore, uh, we think it's wrong. Well, right. that, that doesn't work. I don't understand it, that, therefore, I don't like it. And that that is the uh, the basis for most, um, most hate, you know? It, sure. Anyone not liking someone else is often comes down to the fact that they don't understand that person. They don't understand their habits, their culture, their language, you know, you name it. It's really sad, but we're still living in that world. Uh, Johnny had said something here just a minute ago about uh, one caveat about free Wi-Fi is uh, the, do they profile you when you agree to their terms of use? Absolutely. When you log into free Wi-Fi, my understanding is you might as well just open up your phone and say, hey, come get it. You know, everything on here. When you when you check that little box, who knows what you're agreeing to? And if you're not an attorney, a lot of times it's hard to tell. So I would assume yes, number one. Number two, by someone who knows the technical part of this much better than I, than I do, if you ever want your device to be hacked, you should go and log into a public hotspot anywhere, Starbucks, McDonald's, Ramada, you know, wherever it is that you're staying, all of those Wi-Fi networks, my understanding is trivial to someone who understands hacking at all to get into um, and to uh, inspect the packets that are coming from your device being transmitted and probably who knows what else. So um, I, I generally don't use those all out for my, my 4G Wi-Fi or my 4G uh, network in that uh, situation. So yeah, see, I, the I, not for tech current technology view is a slippery slope. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Uh, do not plan illegal activities on an open or public Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I think I think he meant do not plan illegal activities. Full stop. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that's where he was going with us. The... Right. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Just so, or if you're planning illegal activities, you should use someone else's Wi-Fi. Apparently, I guess. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. allegedly. You should never do that. Obviously, <laughs> uh, the internet is on the top of the chair. Okay. So, real quick, everyone, I did want to show you this because I think it's awesome and it makes me laugh. And I want to put it on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. But if you haven't already read this, this is great. The FTC or Federal Trade Commission has and I am quoting another article on this one, has declared bullshit on warranty void if removed stickers. So this is great news for everyone. This has always been ridiculous for a manufacturer to say, hey, there's a little sticker on the outside of the case of your phone, your PlayStation, 
your tablet, your laptop, whatever it is, and if that sticker gets torn, you no longer have a warranty. It's almost like the Windows license key that's taped to the bottom of your laptop, and when the number wears off, you have no way of recovering it if you don't have a record of that thing already. So the FTC, FTC has come out and publicly stated that no, you cannot tell anyone if they have a device worth more than $15, let me zoom in on this because it's probably a little tough to see. So the mm -hmm. way that they are um, defining this is that it will apply to any electronic device, device, come on, Mike, you can talk, um, <laughs> that costs more than $15. And that would absolutely include cell phones. And we know that some of these big companies that they talk to, they mention a couple of them, uh, Microsoft and a few others, but... Under Magnuson Moss Warranty Act of 1975, companies can't put repair restrictions on their products unless they provide the parts or services for free or receive a waiver from the FTC. Why is that important? Well, any of you who've watched this channel for any period of time know that I am pro right to repair. If you buy something, the fact that you take the back panel off and switch out the battery because yours wore out should not void the manufacturer's warranty. If you break something because you don't know what you're doing, it's totally understandable. If you damage the product in the process, that's on you. That You took the risk, you broke it, it's you now. They can deny you, we all know this. But to have a tiny piece of paper that's stuck to something that says, if you tamper with this, even if you don't break it, even if the, the device is fully functional, just like it was from, from the production line, there that you know a lot of manufacturers have kind of threatened they bullied their customers into believing that if you don't bring your device to us for service you won't have a warranty anymore and this is this is very important to any of us who are involved in third party repairs because we run into this all the time these big companies have the advertising dollars to convey any sort of image or any sort of reputation that they want to their customers by buying advertising, by these, these exactly the stuff we're talking about coming through your <laughs> Facebook feed, your TV, even this video right now, you might see a commercial down here, probably not from Apple, but you, know, <laughs> you never know. Um, but the thing about that is, a lot of people have been brainwashed to believe that if you do anything that the manufacturer doesn't approve of, you no longer have a warranty, and that is complete garbage. It is not true. And the FTC is warning these companies, you cannot tell your customers that that is the case. So if you get your phone screen repaired or you get your Bluetooth fixed on your laptop, that doesn't necessarily void the warranty. Now, obviously, you want to deal with someone who knows what they're doing and hold them responsible if they damage something and, and void your warranty. But to just get customers to think that, oh, I have brand X phone. I have to go contact brand X for any little thing that goes wrong with it. It's ridiculous, but it, it's absolutely in the company's best interest for their customers to believe that once you buy this product, you can only come to us for service. You can only buy your accessories from us. You can only buy you know, your cases, your housing, it's all this kind of stuff. So I'm very happy to see this. Hopefully it is a step towards what we're looking, at, looking to in the future. And that is to have access to the information that we need that we acquire through other sources when we need to do a repair. When we need to see a schematic, we can't call up the local Samsung or Apple store and say, hey, can we download this schematic off your website so we can figure out where this stuff is? No, we get to buy that from, chances are it fell off the back of a truck in China somewhere and then someone made copies of it and sold it to us. Um, a lot of the ones that I see are actually, uh, they're actually branded as coming from Vietnam for whatever reason. So apparently that stuff gets out uh, in a number of different places, other parts of the world. Uh, anyways, for anyone who just joined us, if you don't already know, we are talking to Liron Segev, the techie guy. You should absolutely check out his channel. This is his second visit to us here on YouTube on this channel. And Liron, later on during the stream, will be making an important announcement that I think that you all will be happy to hear about that. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. I can't give it up right up front, but we do have some celebrating taking place in the near future. I'm coming up on 50,000 subs. Leron's coming up on 5,000 subs. And to make progress in this world, you know, considering how competitive YouTube has become, um, it certainly makes you feel good every time you hit one of those milestones. So I'm going to congratulate you in advance, Leron, and also ask you about this crazy, I want to <laughs> find it again. What is this armor coat that you had here? It's a... Uh, a liquid glass protector that you can use on your phone 
And the difference about this one is that it's not just some hocus pocus where, hey, you buy this stuff and it's basically an insurance policy and that's what we want you to do is spend a bunch of money on. These guys have gone in and explained in scientific terms how this actually works. I understand you have it on your phone right yeah. now. Oh, absolutely. Um, as you said, there's so, ma so many of these kind of liquid water that make these amazing claims, which worry me. And uh, this is a company called Cell Helmet. What excited me about them is, firstly, they were seen on Shark Tank. Um, so they, they, they were guys from Pittsburgh. They you know, I want to say, I love Shark Tank. I'm addicted to watching that show. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. but real quick, it's funny. Did you see the cell phone drying machine that they were pitching on there? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> and they bought into it. So uh, they don't always make the most uh, no. educated decisions, but... <laughs> not, not really. Well, especially if you remember that Mark Cuban passed on a little company called Ringer. Oh, right. Yeah, I've seen them make quite a few mistakes, and I always have to go Google that company and see right. where they're at now. But sorry for interrupting you. I no, just no, no, that no. cell phone drying machine. When I saw that, I wanted to call up and say, why don't you guys just have me go on the show, and I'll tell you why that's complete garbage also. But anyways. <laughs> right. So, But I, but funny enough, they actually didn't get any investment from the Sharks um, for their product. But the second they landed back home, they were surrounded by local VCs who said, hey, your product was just exposed to millions of people. We want to buy in. Great story, great company. They've done their research. They've done their, um, they understand the technology. But the big thing with them is, well, basically the base, the background of this is you get a little vial, little vial. You spray this on your phone. You buff it in, and it actually works at a nano level. It fills in those imperfections in the glass, and making the phone screen that much harder. Now it works on all LCDs, your cameras, your watches, your kind of Fitbits, whatever it may be. But for the phone and for the tablet, this thing is a lovely screen protector. And what they did, which I think was um, the clincher for me, is that they showed the test. They dropped the ball um, and showing at what height it will take to crack the screen. And they didn't stop. They did it till they got to like nine foot and then the ball cracked the screen. Now, the respect I have for them is two things. Is one is that they broke their phone. So they showed, listen, it's not bulletproof. It's going to break. If you throw this down a flight of stairs, it will break. But we're trying to protect you against those bumps off the table, bumps on the floor, right? So it was number one. And number two, they've actually got a great product. $300 guarantee. If you break your phone within a year of having this thing on, they'll give you 300 bucks back. Now, I think it's a good warranty. By the way, they've also got other products where it's the warranty, same Val, but the warranty is actually less. So if you've got an older phone and you want a $100 um, kind of guarantee, they've got one, and they've got one, I think, with even no guarantees. We just want the protection on the phone. It's much, much cheaper. So the idea with this, what impressed me was that the Val doesn't change. It's still the same bit of equipment. It's just a warranty changes, which basically increases the price. So okay. I, I really think uh, it's a nice one. And... Um, uh, so far, so good. I'm not going to drop it on purpose, obviously, but um, I'm very happy with a $300 warranty just in case. It is an insurance, but I do like that the way that they've approached it and they understand the science behind it. So, so far, so good. Yeah, the two things that got my attention was that they actually went into an explanation about the imperfections, how glass has a porous surface. And what we often see from customers is that they'll never know that Almost any cell phone you were, if you walked out on the street and said, hey, can I look at a cell phone under a microscope, any random person, you're generally going to find micro scratches that aren't visible to the to the naked eye. And it's right. just like that tiny little crack in your windshield. It's fine as you're going down the road. But if any amount of pressure hits the front, the whole thing starts to spider web. And then the customer says, well, I only dropped my phone one foot off the ground and it landed on the carpet. How did it, you know, the whole glass exploded. Well, that crack was that was the weak point and that's where the stress gets pushed and that's where it ends up cracking so that made sense and secondly as you mentioned instead of having someone with a hammer <laughs> tapping on a screen because how hard are you hitting this thing this is the thing that always, I'm, I'm going really i could break a phone screen with the hammer how do you measure consistent pressure by going like this but instead 
they had two steel balls like you like you mentioned that they dropped on a treated screen a non-treated screen um obviously nothing's bulletproof so again to acknowledge that gives more credibility my question is how much do you pay for that little vial that includes the 300 dollars insurance um, I think it was like 69 dollars. Okay, so they're they're still going to be um, ending up in the positive, but you do get that insurance on your screen right. for probably what you'd pay anywhere else, if not less. And there's no deductible with that one. Exactly, and a lot of people um, ha might have maybe a, a, an older phone or a phone that they, you know, your kid's phone that you still want to protect it, but you're not going to take out an additional insurance for that for that phone. So I right. like the idea that you can pay kind of less and you can pay like I think $49 or whatever it is and you get $100 to repair that screen or even pay $29 and then basically it just goes on the screen with no repair. Um, you know, what what does a glass protector these days set you back around about this, a, a decent one, sets you back around $29, $30? Yeah. Right. So um, the idea, as Johnny says on, on the chat here, he says when you install a an additional protection, it actually can play with the sensitivity of your screen. Mm -hmm. Mike, are, are you finding that as well on your side? On the uh, tempered glass? Yes. I haven't so far. Okay. I, I haven't had that problem. Um, I've had people ask about putting two tempered glasses on top, you know, one on top of <laughs> the other, and you'll absolutely have some problems with that. Right. But most tempered glass, they're engineered in order to not affect the touch screen. That's the idea anyway. So I haven't run into problems there so far. Uh, well, and a lot of people just do exactly as Johnny says. They increase the sensitivity of their touch screen just to kind of counter that whole additional layer, layer of glass. The nice thing about this product is that you don't actually have to play with any sensitivity within um, it kind of within a 24 hours. It cures, but you can use the phone within a couple of minutes. But within the next 24 hours, it gets harder and harder and harder. So I think it's quite a good thing for their product. Okay. It sounds like the glass um, treatment that I got from Germany a while ago. They sent me the little thing to rub on the screen. Uh, in any case, we, we have two questions. One I'm going to have to back up on here in just a second. But um, there was someone who had asked about using the cell helmet on a plastic surface. Do you have any idea if that's compatible? I, I, why would you use it on a plastic surface? Um, I, I, I'm assuming maybe you need a plastic um, protector. Um, you know, yeah. if you've already installed, maybe you already installed one of those cheap ones from the five dollar store. Um, if you had, I would definitely suggest removing that first, and then because the idea with this, it fits into the pores of the glass itself. Right. So that's not going to help. I don't think it will help you. Gotcha. Yeah. So if you've got plastic on top of glass, you want to remove the plastic first. If you have so. some other type of plastic you're trying to protect from scratches, I don't imagine I that don't would know. really be the product mm -hmm. that you're looking for either. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I, I think this is specifically LCD, specifically glass, because they're really into that whole filling in the gap on the nano level. Gotcha. Okay, now I had missed one here from a re uh, Real World Review said that something, uh, um, I am on the other side, this will cause people to break stuff on their phone and then try to force the manufacturer. So this is going back to the um, statement I made about the warranty stickers being voided. And he says, they will then try to force the manufacturer to fix it for free. I can see this act. Okay, did I understand you correctly, real world? You're saying that it, if we if we get right to repair, then people are gonna make the manufacturers fix things that they broke? Because I, I don't think that's what it means really. If you damage the phone, you know, whether you know what you're doing or not, if you break it, not just break, you know, not just unseal the warranty sticker, but if you damage the device, I don't think that means that the manufacturer is responsible anymore. Um, hopefully I answered the question uh, correctly. Um, Galaxy Active or Caterpillar phone. So he had asked about using on a plastic surface cell helmet on a Galaxy Active or Caterpillar phone. Um, again, I think uh, those answers still apply, right? If it's yeah. glass, yes. And if it's plastic, probably not. Right. And I think the Caterpillar fines are specifically built in such a way that they are meant to kind of withstand those pressures. They're out, supposed to be out, uh, kind of outside, outdoors um, for those people who hike and people who work outdoors. So I think they're already hardened by kind of within the manufacturer. I, I wouldn't go risking putting anything additional on top of that besides maybe a, a kind of an external cover. But those, those Caterpillar fines are normally pretty... I mean, pretty darn good. They are insane. Have you seen right. them? 
Like, oh yeah, I, I've driven over them to test them for my channel. Oh, yeah, okay. that, that's what you want to get someone who has a habit of breaking the their phones. The Caterpillar phone is serious, rugged. <laughs> I mean, if you break that thing, you probably put it down in front of a train or something. I, I saw one get thrown up across a parking lot and no problem. No problem. Yeah. Uh, I agree. That's I mean, it will watch. scratch eventually, but uh, but that's yeah. about it. The The reason um, I was looking at the Galaxy S9, I'm sorry, where, did I cut you off there? No, 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 cool. Go ahead. You're good. Okay. So the reason I had brought up the Galaxy S9 is because, you know, nowadays everything's clickbait, right? I mean, I don't really think much about anything until I read the article. So this is from Forbes, and they are saying the reason you shouldn't buy the Galaxy S9, and I'm sure they have another article that says the reason you should buy the <laughs> Galaxy S9, so that's fine and dandy. But here's, here's one thing about it that's interesting. Um, one thing that they state in this article is that the obvious depreciation factor on an Android phone means that if you want the flagship, if you don't mind waiting a little while, you can see these things drop. Look at this. The Galaxy S5 and S7 fell 40.6 and 38.3 respectively in just three months. So I don't believe this is news. We all understand at this point in time that Android phones do not hold their value the same way that non-Android phones would, <laughs> for a lack of better term. So, you know, that's the truth. Um, there are a lot of people who want to have the latest, greatest when it's available, and they will obviously pay the price for that. They're saying here that the Galaxy S8 held up the best, but still dropped 28, I'm sorry, 25.8% in three months. So if you want to get a Galaxy S9 and you don't mind waiting three months, there's a good possibility you can save quite a bit of money, even more so because there is a new leak here for a radical new Galaxy smartphone that's supposed to be even better than the Galaxy S9. I'm going to get right to the bottom line here. The bad news is we probably won't get it here in the US like many other things. That tends to happen for whatever reasons. But so far, we don't know exactly what the term, what the branding is going to be, but they're calling it the SMG8850. And supposedly this thing is everything that the Galaxy S9 should have been. Uh, we have some specs here. I want to say we're talking about a 5 eight inch display, but no curved edges. Yes. Oh, what a shocker. Now here's, <laughs> here's the thing that blows my mind. You know, er, when Galaxy started doing the curved edges, it was just a nightmare for us because getting screens apart in one piece when the glass is shattered and the edges are curved, that is just not a fun thing. And you've got to pay someone to refurbish it. Getting a screen protector to fit onto a curved surface, not a lot of fun either. Um, and I am going to reference, I watched one of Lee Ron's videos called 10 Things You Didn't Know You Could Do With Your Galaxy S9 and found out, because I don't have a Galaxy S9, but you can turn off that curved edge thing if you don't want to see it. You don't need it. You don't need it to tell you it's there. The one thing I take issue with is why do they have a 30 to 60 year old setting for audio? What is that supposed <laughs> to mean? What are you trying to say? I listen to, <laughs> I listen to loud music. You got Okay, so... Um, getting back to this though, so what we're looking at is an overclocked 2.8 gigahertz Exynos 9810 chipset faster than any of Samsung's current flagships. Um, beats the, the iPhone 10 in real world, real world performance tests and it looks mouthwatering, whatever that means, according to this. Now, again, the problem with this is they're going to launch in China and then maybe expand it. I don't know if we're gonna see it here in the US and chances are we'll see a Galaxy S10 next year. Yeah. Um, and this is this is unfortunate. I wanna just briefly talk about this and get your take, Leron, because we, we've had this uh, as a recurring topic for the last few weeks and that is the government advising US citizens against buying Chinese phones for the most part. And they've kind of targeted Huawei and ZTE and, you know, all thing when it's all said and done, my take on this is that it's it's always bad for the computer, the consumer to have fewer choices. Um, and interesting that there are often other motivations behind sure. tariffs, boycotts, and and that sort of thing. And so I remember on our initial conversation, the first time you came on, we had you know you had many good things to say about Huawei, and I haven't spoken to you much about it since then. Since they lost the deal with AT and T, they lost the deal with Best Buy, and for the most part, unless you go online, it's going to be tough to find Huawei like the P twenty Pro. You know where are you going to buy it? Um, your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I, I think that, as you rightly said, it's never straightforward like it's, you know, we don't have proof um, that this is what's happening and therefore. I don't know if you remember recently, uh, I think it was Kaspersky, the antivirus guys. Yes. Uh, there was pr they, they had a decent amount of proof showing that Kaspersky, in part of their kind of processes, was taking files off machines and scanning them abroad. And that was a very dangerous thing, especially since um, a lot of the government organizations were forced to use Kaspersky as their antivirus. So there was a good reason not to trust an overseas vendor. Okay, I fully understand that. Here's the hypocrisy here. Because um, Huawei, they say you cannot use Huawei handset devices because of China. The hypocrisy is that a lot of the backend stuff that runs the cell phone towers is Huawei products. Right. So guess what? They don't need to listen to your phone because if they want to, if they're already in the towers, well, they can get to your phones that way anyway. Uh, so I, I don't know how much I put into this. And, and the fact that they lost Best Buy and at and I don't know. They're not out of the running yet. Um, I think a lot of it's very political. It's very tit for tat. And we don't want to get into politics. But the idea is that it's never quite as straightforward as it seems. Do we trust China completely as a whole? Well, I'm not so sure about that either. But do we think that they want to listen to, into a bazillion U.S. conversations and mm. traffic out? There we go. I'm not so sure. Okay, sorry. We lost. I lost you there for a second. I don't know if anyone else did. Sorry about the uh, connection tonight, folks. It's kind of been on yeah. and off a bit. Um, but on that subject, so um, one of the things about this that it's interesting I would point out is that Huawei – sells switching equipment to small ISPs. So if you're what? not one of the big ISPs, you're buying your equipment from Huawei. If if they can sort of get forced out of the picture, guess what? Then these other smaller ISPs are going to have problems competing in the future. Hmm, makes you think, mm -hmm. right? So right. in addition to that, in addition to this whole Chinese spying on the US and watching out for spying, you know, everything else, and this is gonna be a good lead into our announcement, uh, there's, a, there's a company called Hike Vision, and if you haven't heard of them, here's why you probably will want to know. Number one, they build cameras that are installed all over the United States for police surveillance, for traffic, for you name it, security systems and so forth. And guess who they are part owned by? The Chinese government. So this idea of we need to stop buying Chinese phones because of the possibility of the Chinese government spying on U.S. citizens, I'm going to break your heart here, guys. All of these companies that you see right here are listed as OEM sellers of the Hike Vision cameras, which potentially could have backdoors that go all the way back to China. And look at this list. It's crazy. I'll put, and it, it, this includes some big names on here too. We've got uh, Honeywell. We've got... Hunt CCTV, we got MicroView. I mean, these are big companies and they are all using cameras that were made by this company, Hike Vision, which like I said, if, if there's gonna be a back door, you don't have to worry about selling someone a smartphone. You've got cameras all over the place already. And if there's some way for them to get in and survey you know, anything, and there are probably microphones with a, along with a lot of these cameras, um, what are we gonna do now? Go out and pull everything down and rebuild every surveillance system in the country? I mean, I sincerely doubt that's gonna happen. Uh, and by the way, and don't forget, um, the fact that a, a camera or a system might have a way to get in and, or, and a way to get out, it means it still needs to go across certain protocols of the internet. It still needs connectivity. So if you've got a decent firewall and you've got a decent security officer, you can block all that stuff. You've got a, a facility to say, to sniff all those packets and say, hey, why is this all these packets going to this IP address? What's going on here? You're monitoring that stuff anyway. So realistically, a lot of these things are very much fear mongering, very much about um, don't trust anything foreign. And I think that's a very, very bad road to go down where if you think about it, all our stuff comes from overseas. I mean, at the end of the day, where that's made in America, the physical component are all brought in. Well, not all, but mostly brought in from, from abroad. You've got to be very careful about saying anything outside a certain border is automatically bad. I have a problem with that. Right. Yeah, especially when you're talking about people on top of it. Right. Exactly, <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> so 
Um, we're going to have to move along here. I didn't realize this thing wow. always flies by, but let's do this. What is your website, Leron? Okay, so check it out. It's called thetechieguy.com. So T-H-E-T-E-C-H-I-E.com. Okay, so we're going to go there momentarily. But before we do, Ooh. I'm going to let Leron tell you what the exciting <laughs> announcement is tonight. Don't we have some music, like some, some I know, drum you know, rolls? If I had my OBS really? going, we could have a drum roll. <laughs> we could have all sorts of fireworks going off. But Google Hangouts, what you see is what you get. So I'm going to say insert drum roll here. And I am looking for the entry on your page so that as soon as you say it, I can pull it up. Is it on here? Uh, it should be. Um, it's on the link under our that video that we did. So I think, um, right, everybody on the chat, drum roll. Can everybody? Yeah, we go. Johnny's in the mood. Rick's in All the right. mood. We have drum rolls. We have drum roll, people. <laughs> OK, guys, um, home automation. Who wants one? That's basically the question. What we have done is Mike and I, we have spoken about saying, look, we all want smart homes. We all want the ability to push a button and switch an appliance on. We want a button to be able to switch um, your kettle on so that you don't have to get up and make your coffee. You, you want a button. Kettle? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, have to go, I have to go American into this. This is just driving me. What do you say? Coffee maker. What? I got to give you a bad time. You said flat a minute ago, and I want to make sure everyone knows that a flat means like an apartment or a place to oh. stay. <laughs> no kettle. Next time, I'm going to bring my English to English translator. <laughs> I got to give uh, you a bad time, man. Uh, gee whiz. Okay. So, <clears throat> after uh, basically, a smart home is what we have for you guys. What we have done, we have partnered up with a company called Hive, and they are the smart home masters. They've got these amazing systems that you can control your thermostat, your air conditioning, your heating, your cooling. Um, and yes, even your damn kettle, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. And basically, from a touch of a button, you're able to do this. Guys, we have a great competition. All you got to do is log into this web page. We are going to have a video that both Mike and I are going to be making public straight after the show. Mike, I don't know if you want to make yours public now, and we can kind of send out the link into the chat. Oh, right. You know, we can do that. I will go yeah. ahead and make that a public video right now. Yeah. You can so. do that on your side. So, guys, all you got to do is come and check this out. Um, you stand in line to chance to win one of these things. And um, I believe there's, uh, the odds are pretty good. They've got a couple of these. And um, I know they're going to do a few more with us. So, um, yeah, we invite you. Please click, share, get into this competition. It's going to be quite cool. And win yourself one of these smart home systems and control your kettle from wherever <laughs> you happen to be. <laughs> Mike, I'm going to get you to say this. You know that. <laughs> I'll be talking like that in no time. There okay, everyone. So uh, as soon as we finish here, I believe that I have made that video public. Let me double check. It should be in your feed if you're subscribed. If you aren't, why not? And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you should absolutely do that and subscribe to Leron so you can enter to win this high, um, welcome home hive system. Am I saying it right? Yeah, hive I got it. Home. Absolutely. I'm sorry, hive smart home giveaway. There we go. There it is. So it. the you videos on my channel. Um, thanks to Leroy for putting this together. He did all the negotiating and handled the red tape with the manufacturer <laughs> to get this out here. It looks like a very cool system. I would love to see someone from my channel win. And if not, at least someone from Leron. So if you subscribe to both, you know, it doesn't necessarily increase your odds by two, but hey, um, you get to listen to Leron talk about kettles and I talk about whatever <laughs> you want to come up with. So um, please enter that contest at the very least. I'm really excited to see how that turns out, who wins it, so we can congratulate them. And whew, there we go. With six minutes to spare, I think we covered most of what we had planned. We have done well tonight. Technical Man. problems and all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, let's see if we have uh, we have a question from Johnny Chang, or was it from someone else? He says, 10 minutes until the... Oh, is there a standard way to prepare a cup of tea? I don't know. I, I, I bet you they're not asking you for that. Probably so, not. Okay, so FYI, this is only coffee. I do not do tea. Um, so I can, I'm afraid... I'm not your right guy. <laughs> yeah, well, there we go. Anyway, you know, I, uh, Carl's is Carl on here? He's from England. He would know. He's from oh, Carl. England. There we Carl, go. Tell us about tea. 
<laughs> I wouldn't know. I know it's very hold the bag by the string. Okay. <laughs> Are we talking about tea bags still, people? Yes. As far as I know, I think okay. so. Okay. Uh, so, in other news, <laughs> we have heard that the LG G7, which they said it wasn't going to be the G7, right? It was going to be code name Judy, and then whatever. Well, now it's the LG G7 Thin Q, which I believe is a terrible idea <laughs> to stick with the G series after all the problems they had with the boot loops. And yet, that looks like it's going to happen on May seventh. On May second, I'm sorry, it will have a notch, of course. Of well, course, who doesn't. <laughs> um, What's up with that? I mean, really, seriously. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, know that UTE is making a phone with two notches now, right? Well, why have one when you can have two? <laughs> Twice is good. And I, I assume that the, the the lower notch more than likely will be for a front facing speaker. Or maybe the microphone. I don't know, but um, that that I, I don't get that. Like notch or not, really, is it a big deal? Does I, I, don't care? I don't understand why people actually care. I mean, you have. A, I understand you want to use the most real estate on your screen, but stop it. I mean, you got rid of the headphone jack. Can you just leave the phone alone? <laughs> yes. Stop doing Please. that. Um, <laughs> Exactly Speaking of, before I forget, I wanted to let everyone know, and uh, Leron, I want to keep you on here. And in fact, um, you should definitely tune in next week. We are going to have Udroid Mania joining us. And nice. speaking of headphone jacks, we're going to have Scotty Allen from Strange Parts. He's going to come on and tell us about how he transformed his iPhone with no headset jack to where it now has a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, which Apple obviously could have done because he's proven that it can happen and right. also how he took his 16 gigabyte iphone 6s and made it into a 128 gig with just his bare hands and uh soldering wow. iron and a microscope and a whole lot of practice but um looking forward to that <laughs> <laughs> obviously uh johnny had sent me this link that i thought was really cool and unfortunately i don't think we'll have time to go into it today but I wanted to mention, this is a really cool concept, and it's called Why Apps Won't Matter in the Future, which will be an entire stream on its own. Because think about a couple years down the line where it doesn't matter if you have an iPhone, an Android, a Windows phone, whatever platform you're using, you can access your application through a, an aggregator of sorts that not only allows you to use HTML5 or whatever technology that's running through your phone's browser, but will also go out and choose the best application for whatever task you're trying to accomplish through your personal assistant, pick it out for you, stream it to you, so there's no download. You just stream your application through your phone. We don't have to worry about, and this is something that drives me nuts. I have right. 30 apps on my phone, you know, to the point where now you start creating a file system, my ride stuff is here. My games are here. This is that. And it's like, oh, if you want to come to this website, you have to download our app or you don't get to see that the web. You know, you don't get to see the desktop site on a mobile device. Like there's no way around it. Like, <laughs> and at that point I go close, you know, close, to the yeah. next one. but it's very frustrating. I think, you know, two of the things that drive me nuts. One is having to download someone's application. Number two is logging in with a Facebook ID. Why would you tie your website, your platform, your comment system to some other thing that could come? I'm not obviously it's not going away anytime soon, right. but you really don't have a lot of control over what Facebook does. I think that was a terrible business move. Uh, and by the way, that was that that it was part of the hearing um, about how this external companies are using the Facebook as kind of almost your authorization platform. But what you're giving in exchange, you're giving them way too much information. Right. And, and you guys know when you download an app, maybe it's a backgammon app or a chess game on your phone. Why does it need to use your phone's calendar? Why does it need to use your contacts? Your camera. Your camera, your GPS. It doesn't. And you got you can edit that. You can disable those features. And if the game doesn't work, it's not worth it. Yeah. That... <laughs> I'm with you 100% on that. Drives me insane. All right, let's make sure we haven't missed any comments. It is 7 o'clock. Uh, saw that. It was a little fun watching him do the practice runs. Okay, talking about that. Notch isn't bad. Notch with an LCD is horrible. <laughs> horrible, yes. Horrible, yeah. I just, uh, I still can't get past that. Just give me a strip across the top, and I'm good. I don't need the little horns, you know. Right. Inside, but 
Well, what do you do with all that extra bit of data that you just saw? <laughs> next? <laughs> it's like those people who abbreviate you and your. What do they do with all those seconds that they have extra in their day? I'm Nothing. so excited! <laughs> I can see my I can see my battery status at the same time I'm watching a video without it. In, I, get, I don't know. Animation, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's bold. It's brave. It's uh, ah, whatever. Um, <laughs> what doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. In any case, Leron, thanks so much for coming on. Everyone, also, big thanks to Johnny Chang for helping out with the comments. Right. I like not having to try to figure out who's talking to me and not talking to me, so really appreciate that very much. And, of course, to all of you for tuning in, thanks for coming by. Be sure to check out Leron's channel. Be sure to enter that contest. I can't wait to see who ends up winning that smart system. And other than that, I think I'm done. Is it time to go? <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> all right, everyone. Another uh, great episode, Mike. Well done, dude. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Um, I'll see you all next Monday, 2 p.m. If not, Thursday, 6 p.m. Johnny and Leron, if you want to hang on for just a second, I'm going to end the broadcast, and we'll say goodbye. And for everyone else, have a great evening.